has been running as an outlier against the Democrats for the whole of this year. Four-point lead in Pennsylvania for Kamala Harris is worth a weekend of champagne. Quinnipiac, we mentioned the other day, has her up by six in Pennsylvania. Marist and the Washington Post separately have her up by just one. On the other hand, other hand, other hand, there is one poll this month that has Trump up in Pennsylvania. One. What's happening? Well, the easiest explanation is the oldest one. Polling sucks. But it's too easy. In point of fact, the polls are not as bad as they used to be. They're better than they were in 2020 when they're far better than they were in 2016. But we keep ignoring one fundamental thing that the pollsters are so used to that they don't really make a big deal of anymore. The polls offer two flavors of results. Who is leading among registered voters and who is leading among likely voters? Registered voters is defined. Are you registered to vote? Yes, I am. You're a registered voter. They don't ask people in this way, are you a likely voter? They try to ascertain in their own opinion if this person is in fact likely to vote. The idea of the likely voter is the better number. It is more predictive, but it can be played like a $2 banjo. That is where pollsters can be prejudiced towards one side or the other. These people who say they're going to vote for Harris, uh, we're going to declare them not likely voters. Or these people that say they're going to vote for Harris, we're going to declare them likely voters. Each pollster has his own definition of likely voter. And the ones that are playing it straight, did they vote in the last state election? Did they vote in the last national election? Do they know the candidates? Did they vote in both the nationals and locals? Did they vote in midterms? you get a score. You could have 10 pollsters, though, poll literally the same 1,100 people in Pennsylvania or anywhere else, and based on the different definitions of likely voter, the same pollsters interviewing the same 1,100 people could give you a final score of Harris leading by six, Harris leading by four, or Harris leading by one. Key thing in Pennsylvania is the number of pollsters who, no matter what they do to get this number, can put together Trump ahead in Pennsylvania is nearly extinct. There's also one interior polling number worth mentioning. I'll give Axios credit on this. While they were whining at the same time about Harris not giving them an interview and they're on a record pace not to give any interviews before the elect because they're trying to hire. Okay, whatever. You're that important. They're running a campaign. They're not running to win over the vote of Jim Vandehei. 